Okay, hello. Um, so, I was just busting out a diary that I haven't written in in a while and realized that maybe maybe a diary isn't the best thing to do. Maybe I should just make videos because it's a lot easier than sitting there and writing everything out. And my handwriting is horrible when I'm in a hurry and I'm just trying to jot down my thoughts really quick and I'm not sitting at a desk and, you know. So, I just thought maybe... It would be a better thing to do to just do my video diary instead do a video diary so and I love watching people's videos I do that all the time on YouTube that's what I do like all day every day watch videos and I especially like all the camper van people who um, just hang out and just chat you know, and I'm always in a hurry when I'm making my videos. I don't want to take up too much of your precious time. And I think that it's too valuable to waste. And so, this is my favorite coffee cup. Cherries. <laughs> I don't know why I love it, but I do. I had a set of four. And I decided, this is when I had my big house up north. I decided that um, I was not going to use those four coffee cups. And that was cherries um, peach, which I still have an apple and grapes. And I wasn't going to use them until I got a new place. Cause I knew I was leaving. I gave that place 10 years, raised my boys there. It was great. It was fun, but I had 28 acres. It was huge property. I had a little lake on my property. It was a hundred percent ours man-made lake. And, um, it was just a great time. It was a great time, but it was way too expensive for me by myself on disability. Um, so I said, you know, I tried doing a bed and bed and not a bed and bath. Now, I mean, not a bed and breakfast, but a bed and bath. I tried running out rooms um, that didn't pan out. I rented my property out to farmers and and um, hunters, and, you know, and just tried in every which way to make it work. And the place was just falling apart underneath me. And I just couldn't afford it. So I gave it 10 years. If, it, if a place like that with 28 acres could not support itself after 10 years, then I was going to leave. And I left on the day. On the day. I bought it. I bought it um, 10. Oh, 10, 20 of 04 and on 10 20 of 14 I had my little Toyota and I had been studying the feasts in the Bible and had been doing them for several years and um, the Feast of Tabernacles started that day and that represents the years that the Jewish people were wandering and so that was the beginning of my wandering. And I don't feel that I've found a home yet, even though I have this house that I'm in. Um, there's no settled to me. And I, and I want, what I wanted to do at that time was to take my boys. They were young still. Um, and we were just going to go travel and see the, the whole United States while they were still young enough to come with me and enjoy it. And I've been through a lot since then. My boys are gone. They flew the coop. <laughs> Cooper and Benny flew the coop. And um, both my dogs that I had have since died. Now I've got Layla. Um, just a lot of things have changed, but the one thing that hasn't changed is I still don't feel like I have a home. And I do plan on still, <laughs> I mean, I'd have my boys with me now, um, but I have my little girl, Layla, and uh, she's sleeping over there. And I do plan still to see the world, or at least the United States. And I see some awesome, amazing people on the internet that are doing that, and they're just, I was just watching this lady. Um, 
the minivan Lee show. 71 years old. She's 71 and she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Oh my God. She's gorgeous. And she does, um, she's been living in her minivan for seven years and doing great. She loves it, you know? And, um, so this is just me talking, a little boring video, right? And I notice a lot of these people that do the van videos show you what they eat and how they cook. So, but I just got a new one. This one's not a Toyota. This one is a Chevy and it's made by the Zimmer company, which if you know anything about the Zimmer company, I had to study, you know, a little bit. They had some very, very high end vehicles. Um, the Golden Ghost and the Silver Spirit or Silver Streak. Very high-end vehicles. Like in the 80s when cars were 70000 these were fifty, sixty thousand dollar cars. And, and they also did van conversions for quite a long period of time. Real high-quality and, you know, high-end, high-quality um, van conversions, Zimmer conversion vans and it was top of the line best that you could get and um and they made for a very short period of time really high-end rvs on the van base steel construction the whole thing steel construction top quality two inches of insulation built in so i found one no rust, none, no rust whatsoever. And, um, 45,000 miles on it. So I'm so thrilled and I can't wait to get my hands on it. We got it shipped down here from Ohio or shipped up here from Ohio. And it's, a, it's in the mechanics yard and, um, there's nothing wrong with it. He's gone over it. So I'm waiting for him to call me to say I can go pick it up. And then, the interior, the original interior has been taken out of it and it was remodeled, you know, relatively nicely, but we're going to do a lot to get it ready to hit the road. So, you know, solar, there's no heat in there per se. So we're going to fix up heat and air conditioning and, and, you know, get it ready for the road, fix it all up our way or my way anyways. So we'll see how it goes. Mike wants to take it down to his brother's and work on it there. And I don't really like that idea. And, um, you know, our relationship isn't really that great. I mean, it's not horrible in the sense that, you know, like we're not fighting or anything like that. It's just we really just don't talk. He's all about work. And he gets all his words out with the people that he works with. And I'm just alone as alone can be all the time. And I, I got my real estate license back up, which I did years ago. And I've got a team. We're on it. We're a team of girls. And yet still, I still am feeling very alone. Nobody's ever in the office. I was, you know, telling Mike how lonely I was the other day. And he's like, well, just go in the office. I go, there's nobody there. You know, that doesn't do me any good. And I'm just a person who, who needs people. Like, I just need human contact. So this does feel better than just writing in a diary, I think. I was doing that for quite a while every day and I just stopped um I had this really cool system that I was doing of giving myself points for the things that I wanted to accomplish every day and trying to make sure that I did things that I wanted to do to get closer to my goals and um it was really working and then I tried to up my game I read a book <laughs> I got another one too, but I read a book called Eat That Frog and it, 
inspired me to change my system. And when I did that, instead of succeeding every day and getting all my points, I was um, just floundering, completely floundering. And I gave up on the whole system because I didn't know how to revise it to make it work. But I did realize that after doing that for a few months, that most of the things that I wanted to establish as habits are now established as habits. So that's good. I mean, simple things. I just make sure that I brush my teeth every day. I make sure that I, you know, take my berberine. I make sure that I have my breakfast, um, you know, just the simple things. But, you know, I would, I would give myself credit for that because that's what I need for me. I need to feel like I'm succeeding and that I'm doing what I need to do and just give myself a star on my forehead because I just need that. I do. I just need that. And um, so anyways, I don't know where I was going. But yeah, I got a new book and I probably, this is probably going to set me off on some other weird path, right? But it's called Mastery. And I think it's like a college book that gets assigned in classes sometimes by a fellow named um, Robert Green. So I'm really excited to read it. I haven't read in years um, besides that, that book that I just told you about. I, I've really read nothing. My eyes are bad, and that's why I really feel like I need to get out on the road ASAP, you know, because who knows? Maybe my eyes are going and, and I'll be blind or too won't be able to see good enough to drive and you know, so many years. And I don't want to just waste away because I feel like I'm just wasting away sitting here in the house. Every day I, you know, and I've been, the last few days have been really bad. I've been depressed. Just no contact with human beings is depressing. So anyways, I think, I think I'm really going to like this book. I ordered it because I saw a video <laughs> with the author and I really liked it so but it's hard it's small print I had a, a car accident and the three people who hit me the police said that they were their blood alcohol was so high that they should have been dead from blood alcohol poisoning. But they all died in the accident. They were going 110 miles an hour when they hit me head on. And that was after being on the brakes for, I don't remember if it was 200 or 2,000 feet, the skid marks were. And why was I saying that? Oh, and I what happened is it gave me cataracts. And there's... Two different kinds of cataracts, apparently. And the minute the doctor looked, they're like, you've got trauma-induced cataracts from the accident. And I couldn't see. So I had one of them, which was worse, taken out. And they replaced my lens. And I really kind of wish that it wouldn't have been done because I can no longer focus. And I really don't like that. Um, it kind of, it's bad on your depth, depth perception. And the same eye, I have like a fisheye effect, almost dead center in my center of vision. So the letters and words and lines and everything, there's color in that circle, but all the lines go like this around it, like even the, the road signs. So I have to like trick myself and not look at a thing in order to be able to see it. And then for some reason, and I still don't know, I don't want to go back to the eye doctor because I feel like they damaged my eye so bad. Um, it felt like I had a piece of glass in my eye for 10 years. It doesn't really feel like that now. Thank, thank God. But I, I'm, I'm afraid to go back. Is, it, is that crazy? And then you also, to go to an eye doctor, you have to have a driver. You have to have a secondary driver to take you there because you, you can't drive back. So I've never gone back, but I see double. I see two of everything. 
when I look at a street light, there, there's two and then two more, you know. Uh, I've watched, <laughs> I've watched a pair of birds in the sky dancing. Oh, it was so lovely. Their little courting dance, the two birds in perfect synchronicity until I realized, girl, that's one bird. <laughs> Oh, anyways, <laughs> I see double everything, so it's really hard to read, but I can do it. I can do it, and I just did read a book, and I've got one of these. I don't know how well that'll help. <laughs> I don't know how to do effects on here. I don't know how to splice. I don't know how to, like... People have background music or whatever. Or, um, I don't know how to do any of that. But I think maybe it would be better for me to do this than to just write out in a diary. And uh, I was just saying something to Benny this morning. Benny is my youngest. And I have the closest connection with him. He's up north. And um, he struggles financially and I think physically he's got some issues, you know, and he's always, um, always, all his life required like this extraordinary, exorbitantly high, um, I'm trying to think of the right words, <laughs> amount of sleep. He just sleeps a lot and he always did. And, and you know, I used to take him, I took him to the doctor several occasions thinking maybe he was diabetic because he was thirsty all the time and always had to pee, always had to pee. So I'd take him in and they'd say, no, his blood sugar's fine. There's nothing wrong, but there's something. And I hope that he figures out what it is. But along with, because I have low, low blood sugar and I'm, I'm eating right now like a um, almost completely carnivore diet. I don't have earrings on. I don't go out of the house without earrings. I feel naked. I'll turn around and go back home. It's like, ah, I have no earrings. So anyways, um, I did notice, like I look at other people's videos a lot. And they don't worry about how long they are. And people watch longer videos, so... I'm not going to stress about it because I usually do. I'm usually like in a hurry. I feel like I don't want to waste your time. But um, what was I getting at? I wish I could rewind myself and see what I was just saying. So I know. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. Shoot. That's, that's it. That's what I was getting at. Blood sugar. I was talking about sugar. And I know that one of the symptoms of um, when my blood sugar is low is I forget things a lot. I get real spacey. Um, like I'm, I'm afraid to cook myself food when I need food the most because I'll forget that I turned the stove on and burn it, you know? Um, and kind of weak, you know, stuff like that. And and Benny deals with stuff like that, too. So, he did go into the doctor and get his, his blood tested. Not for that, just in general. And his blood sugar was 12. And they said they thought that um, they wanted to come, him to come back in immediately the next morning and get it retested. But they thought maybe the test was messed up. Because it tested right the next day. But anyways, I was talking to him this morning and said something about talking to myself. I don't remember what it was. I sent him some kind of a little gif, you know. Um, no, because I told him he needs to eat because he doesn't eat. He can't afford it. I drove, you know, I mean, it's two and a half hours up there. I drove up there and made sure to get him up. A hot plate. He just has a room he's renting. Got him a hot plate. A little mini fridge that I gave him. And um, 
you know, just try to make sure that he's able to eat. But he doesn't. He's, you know, and I forget to eat. I forget to eat. I'm one of those persons that just doesn't remember to eat. That's why I have to give myself a star on my forehead if I remember to eat breakfast. Um, so I communicate with him a lot just to make sure he's okay because I do worry. I got grounds in my coffee somehow. I don't know how I'm chewing my coffee. Um, so, yeah. Oh, so I was telling him, see, I'm so dirty. Did I eat today? Um, I was telling him to eat, and I hadn't eaten yet. So I said, oh, I'm talking to myself. And I sent him a little gif of, you know, somebody looking in the mirror and talking to themselves. So maybe talking to a camera where people might actually see it and hear it is better than talking to myself, which is kind of what I'm doing when I'm writing a journal is just talking to myself, right? So I want to do a lot of fun and, and interesting things. And I do have the new camper and I'm really excited, but I don't have it. I have it over there a couple miles away mechanic's house. I don't know what he's doing. He's probably, um, this is crooked. Whoop. He's probably working because he has a second job. Because he's working on my vehicles for free. Right? Isn't that awesome? It's so cool. And, um, I had a, a, a Lachero camper. Very cool. And he said he would trade me that Lachero for work on my vehicles. And Mike also has a boat that he wants a nice boat uh, but Mike doesn't want it anymore and uh, so so I get work done to my vehicles for free and then my daughter had a, a Toyota that I got from her because she was ready to just send it to the scrapyard because you know we live in the city and you're just not allowed to keep things <sighs> you know they harass you so she was getting harassed about this camper and she was just not going to deal with it. And she was just going to send it to the scrapyard and it didn't have a title. And I figured out how to get a title for it and get it out of there before she scrapped it. So he's working on that. We had to buy a head for that. And the inside is gutted. But we'll see how that one goes. But he's done work to the one that I drive every day. And now he's done work to my, um, I've got a, uh, Canyon, an 05, 05 or 06 Canyon, and I had a different mechanic, paid the guy $1,500, and he picked out, it needed, it needed a freaking frame. This guy traded me. I had a beautiful navigator that it was just costing me a fortune. It was just one thing after another that I had to fix on the darn thing. And I was just afraid it was going to be another expensive something coming up. And it costs so much to drive and it costs so much for the plate and insurance and stuff like that, that I decided I, I wanted a pickup truck. And I've always, I, I love pickup trucks and I've had, I had a little um, S10 that I loved. And I love the S10s. Period. The four threes rock. I've had probably 14, I think 14, 15 S10s of, you know, S10s or S15s, the Jimmys or the Blazers. Four door, four wheel drive Blazer. That's just my machine. I just love it. And um, so, anyways, I wanted a little pickup truck because I had an S10 pickup truck. And this guy traded me for this beautiful, I mean, you couldn't see hardly a thing wrong on the paint anywhere. Gorgeous inside interior, nice, nice Canyon. And I realized after the fact that the frame was completely rotted, like where the bed and the cab line up, it was like this, you know, if the ca cab couldn't lean on the bed, then, or the bed couldn't lean on the cab, it probably would have cracked, cracked in half. So this guy picks out a frame on Facebook Marketplace and he can replace the frame for me. The frame was in Ohio. We had to send two people down there. My son went down with the mechanic. 
$1,200 for a frame. Go down there with the trailer and bring it up. And he put the frame on. And then he just didn't... The vehicle, apparently, was rusty under the paint. So, like, everywhere you touched it, and he touched it in a lot of wrong ways and a lot of wrong places. And there's a lot of damage to the body, which hurts my feelings. And I just had to close my eyes. What else are you going to do? And they kept saying, oh, we can fix that. We can fix that. Okay. Okay. And then they just dipped. He just dipped on me and turned into a real jerk. Well, come to find out this is why. He bought a two-wheel drive frame for a four-wheel drive truck. Fortunately, my new mechanic is amazing. All hail to the new mechanic. He's amazing <laughs> because he was able to modify the frame so that the thing will go down the road and all that. Now, I don't have it back yet, but I don't, ha I mean, I was so excited. The day I got that truck was like one of the happier days of my life. I was elated. It was red and it was shiny and it was cute. And it was nice and it was just what I needed. And that was in the spring. And I wanted a pickup truck for the whole summer. And I've been a whole summer without a pickup truck, needing it. I need it for this. I need it for that. I want to go here. I want to do that. And I can't do any of it. Now it's winter. And I'm going to get this not shiny, not cute as it was. And now I just really don't have confidence in it. So I think I'm just going to get rid of it. Cost a fortune. So, but anyways, he's done that for me. And I'm waiting to hear from him. But he, he does work, you know, construction also. I mean, he works on a lot of high-end vehicles. He's a really, really excellent mechanic. He should have his own shop. For real. But I'm looking forward to it. Not so much to my truck. I don't even care about that stupid truck now. But the vehicle that I got, the boat, I started to tell you it's made by the Zimmer Company. I don't think there were hardly any of them made. I found a couple after searching real hard, real, real hard. I found a couple um, videos on YouTube here that have the, um, they call it a mobile traveler. And so I found a couple videos. Mine is by far the nicest one out there that I've seen. It has zero rust. And it has um, 45,000 miles. So I'm excited and I do want to hit the road. I really do. Because sitting here, I just feel like I'm wasting away... I had already decided that I was leaving here and I was just going to pull out what I want out of the house and I pulled out most of what I felt I needed and put it in my camper. But nobody, Mike has never lifted a finger to help me with that camper. And we were going to do this together. We were going to do this, do this, do this and, and we've done nothing. Chris has done a few things. I've taken it into the shop a few times, but I've watched it instead of being upgraded like the plan was. Instead, it's downgraded. But anyways, I put stuff in there thinking that I want to pull out of this house everything that I need. And, you know, if Mike has a building, if there's space, if there's things that is are worthy of of storing we have a place that we could store some things and then when i'm done pulling out what is essential everything else can go everything 
maybe call in a, an estate service, have an estate sale, or whatever, sell stuff online. I don't know, but it, I, but this feels like living in a garbage dump. Oh, and then when I get the house cleared out, number one, I've got a grant, a $25,000 grant to get a lot of stuff done. And, you know, once there's nothing in here, now you can work on it. And what I wanted to do is rent it out and I'll have income and that'll give me more, you know, more income to go on. And I would still have something to come back to if I wanted to, if I needed to, you know. So that's the big game plan that's just been on hold, stalled, 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 stalled. You know, I just feel like I'm just melting into this, what feels like a dumpster of what it, up here I've already left behind. Not here. Here. You know what I'm saying? Mentally, I'm not here. I'm already gone. But physically, I'm here. And it just feels like it's dragging me down. So that's my dear diary. <laughs> dear diary. It really helps to, to spit it out. Which is what I was doing with the diary. It really was helping me. Rather than just sitting here and thinking whatever thoughts I'm thinking. At least I'm doing something. And writing them down. I don't know why that helps, but it does. So maybe this will help better? I don't know. But, like, I want to be... If I'm going to do YouTube videos, I want to be good at it. I want to do it well. You know, and I look at other people and what they do. And, you know, I got their... Do 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 intros and they get their music and they splice things and they you know I don't know how to do any of that. They got their little outro. I ain't got none of that. So do I need to do that? Do I need to develop like an intro and an outro and figure out how to put music in the background and splice things? I just got this little cell phone and me. <laughs> And with the real estate, I do want to promote when I get listings or even if our office gets listings, I want to promote the listings. I want to promote things to do with real estate. Some of the girls, well, we've got this team and we've made a couple little short videos. Goofy is all good, <laughs> but you know, hey, it's part of the team, right? So, but I'd like to improve on that and I'd like to do you know like work related videos real estate related videos you gotta do something so first video I've done in a long time no it's not I lied I did a video just the other day about my camper so you guys saw it sort of if you want to look at the other video it's there but I didn't do a good video I, I that's what that's what got me started got me thinking because I saw this this young couple they had just bought a mobile traveler like what I have and they did a very detailed video about it it's not anywhere near the shape ours is in but it's all original too you know which ours is not but the point is that they they showed you every detail and they weren't in a hurry like I'm always in a hurry and don't feel like details are what to do so I wasn't in a it's 34 minutes but I wasn't in a hurry this time I decided that you know if other people can take their time and make videos and get views and people watch it then maybe this one will you know I could just take my time Maybe I took a little bit too much time. Maybe I should, you know, limit it. And that's the kind of things I'm talking about. If I want to do videos, I want to do something that people would want to watch. And um, 
you know, I don't know, like, should they be shorter than 10 minutes, shorter than 20 minutes, shorter than 30 minutes, longer than 10 minutes, you know, I, I just don't know. Like, for me, I don't like the long, long videos, although I do like the long, long videos. It's just you don't usually have time to watch the long, long ones. And I'll usually set up a playlist of videos that are like um, 20 minutes or less. And then, you know, maybe a little bit longer if it's something I'm really interested in. And then if I see um, little short ones that I like, I'll add, because you can say play next play next, play next. So I try to put all the short ones in the front because I might fall asleep before the end of the list if I put them at the end. So anyways, if anybody watches this, maybe you could give me some advice as to what would make it better or, you know, whatever. Okay. That was kind of fun. Thank you. Be blessed. Peace. Bye.